So what have we got looking looking good? What we'll do is we'll take a look at the uh, currency board in a moment. Just catching up on what's gone on. Right, let's get this screen shared then. Let me know that you can see the screen, guys. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, as expected, and as we've been talking about, this dollar continues to bleed out, but it's it's pretty pretty static stuff. But it it is slowly decaying. This this bullish trend, right? So. Um, so this is the daily bullish trend that we're talking about and it's topping out okay and it's giving us lower lows each day that we talk about looking for a weaker dollar but it's happening before our u.s session right so we're getting these moves that are happening ahead of our session and we're getting the froth so we're having to sort of scout whatever opportunity we can we can we can make for ourselves when we cross the board. <clears throat> so just sticking with the dollar for the time being. We had that impulse correction up to test up to test um is that the closing price of yesterday? No what that red line is shouldn't be there like that bizarre okay right yes it is yesterday's closing price so we're up to test yesterday's closing price Sorry about my fan going haywire. <clears throat> Interesting. So we're getting capped here at, at what last last month's and last week's highs. That was on Friday. So we've got that strong peak formation. Day one, day two, day three. Three could be the correction which we're seeing. We've made lower lows. We're in breakout mode, so I would I would argue that so long as we can hold in and around below 103, we've got this W formation here. It could be a weight. I'm doing that right, but something like that, <clears throat> which could be a weight on the dollar coming back inside. Right, so I think the bias needs to remain bearish overall. They have. It's very choppy, so it's not easy to navigate, but <clears throat> well, let's see if this trend line holds up. We've got major structures, not until yesterday's highs up here, 103.15-ish. Right, so let's regard between here 
and in there the resistance for the bay head, that box, and that is the line of the sand up there, 103.15 ish. So ideally, to keep with the status quo across other pairs, we'll get to those in a minute, we want to see the dollar stay within the realms of 103.15, the trend line, and then obviously lower. And back into this neckline is the immediate target into yesterday's lows here so we want that as a target area and then dropping below for a continuation to the downside all right so that's what we're looking for for the us dollar we want it to to remain under pressure as it comes up meeting supply and then eventually breaking these lows today. Whether that happened today or later in the week, but that's what we're looking for in the US dollar. If we get back above 103.15, then that bearish thesis starts to erode. <clears throat> All right, so checking out the yields. If your video isn't working, try popping out and coming back in again. That seems to fix it for people. Uh, for the yields, we're seeing that sell-off that we were talking about. Came up before coming down, but now we're having a correction. So we can see some correction, correctiveness happen here. So this is a bearish impulse correction back up but then looking for the continuation that would fit the mold of what we were talking about over here or wherever it went um, down here I guess now let's add that to the watch list So corrections in the dollar up and yields before the next move to the downside. Same with the two year. Right, let's move over to the currencies. You don't hear my fan anymore, that's bizarre. Um, because this fan's going bonkers right now. Um, right, on the calendar, we should start there, really. So we've got 655, some housing data. That could be important. I think uh, mortgage prices and so forth, they're, they're elevated with the rates and so on. Um, and we've got Fed speakers as well later on today. New Zealand retail sales, early Asia. Um, not sure they're going to have too much impact. The RBNZ is happy where rates are, despite volatility in the data. And those are the main events, really, for today. And obviously, we're building up towards the Jackson Hole at the end of the week. Yeah, the birds, I'm up before the birds these days. <laughs> it's early doors here. It's 5 a.m.-ish. I can hear them coming up though. Anyway, um, let's have a look at what looks hot. Okay, I'm going to start with the yen. Considering yields seem to be a driving force. So we started off the week in a 
continuation of Friday's low to the upside. Today we're pulling back into that impulse, so that was a bullish impulse that we've moved into. The question is now, are we going to continue on up, or are those yields going to plummet and give us a sell opportunity in the US session? So we're correcting currently, but maybe we're coming back down. And that would play into our weak dollar, weak yields thesis. So we've got the point of control on the day, that red line there, which comes in round about 146. So that could be potential resistance. So, correcting. This, the reason why these candles are yellow, because so far it's an inside day. It's inside of Monday's range. So the high was on Monday, the low was on Monday, and we're inside of that. Also to note, therefore, is that if we pull up, let's make this a clean chart. And we'll just put the session splitters up. So what we've had is we've had three levels of rise. So from down, Friday's low, that was level one, shot up level two, came up to level three, and we've consolidated up top. Okay, so we consolidated up top, and we've come down into level two towards the lows. So we moved out, moved back up here, and dropped. So we're dropping, we're moving up, perhaps we're coming down to level three. Right, perhaps this is the correction up into test. These lows in here. So we'd actually pull a box out like this if you want. It's just easy to see, recognize. So maybe we're coming back up in to level three to test the lows of level three. Might make it easier to read it this way with the boxes. So up into level two to come down to level one again or thereabouts. So this is a day two, so we failed to hold up high, so day one, day two. So day two is often a continuation of the day one peak formation at the top. So Monday came up to test up high on the week, all right, and failed. So day one failed to move high, and we're coming back in on the inside. And this is a continuation, day two, continuation of that peak formation. And therefore, any correction, we can look to fade. I changed my DXY because it wasn't showing correctly the... Uh, I don't know, the chart would seem a bit weird to me. It just didn't look right. My, my indicators weren't fitting the chart properly, so I moved to a different one. And it was yesterday's close. It was not where it should have been, I don't know. It might just be early and I'm getting confused, but it doesn't matter. They're, they're the same. 
same price action. The rates can be different, but the price action is roughly the same. So. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on dollar yen. Um, in that regard, so maybe we'll get interested. Oh, it's not that one. We'll become more interested when we get a test of the. 38.2, so we've got that, so we've got 50 as well. We've got this low over here, 145.84, we've breached that. So if we go down to the lower time frame, right, so that's the picture, guys. I guess I can take all this off now because it's just messing up the chart, right? So the point here is that we've had the peak formation, we've had the move in line with that peak formation on Monday, it's continuing lower. If we scroll out to the higher time frames, just to put this into context, we've got this um, bullish impulse, a market that is topping out, it's consolidating up high, so we're looking for the move into short, into longs, We've got that target over here. This target area to move into where volumes are, and then the top of that should be over here. to come down so that would be the first logical target area right at the top of that correction so that's putting into context on a longer time longer term time frame and then on the hourly I'm just going to get rid of the uh, or move the get rid of the fillers get rid of this white line and we'll move down to a 15 minute chart and we will note that we are on the front side of the bearish trend okay we've got this W formation so perhaps this is the support line that we're going to need to see break see this low here broken so maybe we've got an opportunity for a scalp with this low broken here so we're going to move back in so we've come we've come down moving back up into the peak formation up here so really what we want to be seeing is the price coming out Coming out of this, moving back in again, and then continuing for the day. But we could be well premature. This is all stuff that we're looking for towards um, the Wall Street Open. So we've still got an hour and a half of plenty can happen between now and then. Um, a lot of this stuff that happens in and around the Open can be volatile, you can get caught um, between false breakouts and all sorts. So I prefer to wait for as closer to 9.30 is where you're going to see these breakouts with momentum that don't come back. So you're, you're less likely to get caught up in chop. 
Um, so just scratch my head on this one a bit, a bit more, and then we'll move on. Just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. downside continuation. Now that being said, what are these sticks you doing? It's meeting resistance like we've talked about. It yields. A bit more complicated these yields. Hard to say. The yields haven't really come up into any particular resistance area. We've got this over here, but potentially, maybe we're meeting resistance already. Maybe that's as far as it's going to come up. move is going to occur before 9.30. Right, what we can do for dollar yen is we can put an alarm get interested if we get a close below here on a 15 minute basis. So less than uh, once per bar close, 15 minutes. So we've got an alarm on, what is it, 105.73. If we get a 15 minute close below that level, it will be interesting to, to monitor it and see if it pulls back inside, fails. And then maybe we can catch the move if it's going to make that move. So remember, we're looking at this, we spent a bit of time on this, but it is setting up. So impulse correction, and we're looking for the continuation to the downside. Front side of the bearish trend. Now, I might be a bit premature. This could be, this could easily be three bars higher. So one, two, and a third bar right up into the resistance, breaking the trend line. So it could be premature in this. But that's why I want to see if we get a 50-minute close below that level. Because if we do, then the intentions are likely, to the, likely sooner than later to the downside. But let's not see if we don't get another move up. One, two, three pushes up into the highs or into the resistance, and then, then the blow off. Right, so that's high up on our list. Now let's go to the Aussie or let's have a look at hmm. yes. So yesterday, we were talking about this broadening formation, and I drew you there, but we were expecting a move up, so we got that move up. So let's clean up the chart entirely, start fresh. Let's go out to the daily chart. Right, so... This is what we were looking for, wasn't it? We were talking about the corrections. The correction is underway. I'd like to see a 38.2. Have we got that yet? Almost. So I think there's more to come. That's a strong impulse. It's likely got momentum in this to continue on up. 
um, drop that one there, almost that, this one there, higher up we've got here and here. Okay, so all of that resistance. Okay, so we'll leave the lines in, we'll melt them red for resistance, we'll turn them down a bit, and then we'll move down to the lower time frames. Okay. So, impulse, correction, and potentially rolling back over to the downside, eventually. But for the meantime, bullish. And we can put this trend line. See, there's plenty of, plenty of way to go to come up into that trend line. So we're looking at 65.20 as a 60... 1.8 correction that would be my thesis or maybe or maybe as only as far as the 50% mean reversion of that impulse top to bottom 6490 just eyeing it really it's very steep here I mean it could blow up potentially just fizzle out a bit and find resistance in and around here before we move lower. Or, indeed, it's just going to drop from here, but there does seem to be momentum in this. That candle's very strong, isn't it? One, two, three, fourth day of higher highs, higher lows. Right. Um, right then, so coming down to today, Pretty flat out of the blocks on Monday. So that's sort of a coil. And you can see when you when you come out of these narrow ranges. So let's call all of that the box. When you come out of these narrow ranges, you can often see explosive parabolic uh, moves. Because of all that energy that's been pent up, look at it that way. When you've got a spring that coils, it tends to burst so same with markets so um, there's no surprise there that we're seeing a pretty firm correction out of a firm impulse out of that consolidation and um, don't see any reason why it can't continue higher for the day So bullish on Aussie for the day ahead. That's all I have to say about it really for the time being. Um, day two continuation out of yesterday's peak below. So that's indicating that's the peak formation to the downside. Here, that low. And we're coming, we're continuing north so you might get a trend trade with that um, so you're looking to buy the dips on the front side of the um, trend line so if you get a retest towards that trend line and start seeing for instance i'll give you an example um take it back to here for instance so we're looking for something similar that occurred here on the five minute chart So you saw that market dumping down, and then you saw this in a bit. So the market dumping down. Well, at this point, in fact, it's probably not the best example. Um, so the trend line was established as that. 
that you have your horizontal support. Dots. Right, so what we're looking for is a similar scenario. We're looking for this, this kind of price action later in the day to, con to continue on out. And we're likely to get that the, the closer we get to the higher volume area of the day, which is going to be around the Wall Street Open, 9.30 in New York. So you're looking for the price to come in to the trend line and give you bullish structure so here we've got a bottoming pattern all right we've got the breakout and that would have been your entry uh, to ride higher um, yeah so you're looking for those explosive moves to the upside all right so at the moment we are some way away from the trend line so perhaps we're going to get a move back in to retest it and then at that point we can start looking to see if we get um, set up signals for the move up okay so that's also on the watch list um, we'll go to euro dollar so euro dollar is a day three. Let's come out to the hourly. See what's going on. Right, so we're getting a day three long squeeze here. So we're moving back into peak formation that was set on Friday. And we've moved up into Thursday's highs. We've broken out and failed. So we're back on the inside of that move. That's where the dollar's been picking up. So we broke that. That's now resistance. So are we going to see the euro strengthen and the dollar strengthen? And that will go against our thesis. Right, let me pull right back to the start to the daily chart and see what we're looking like in context with the longer higher time frames right so we've got this m formation so in fact we're bullish so we've got this m formation it's pulling on the price back in towards the neckline so this correction there is a correction that's underway here to the upside so this is why it's important to look at your longer term charts we've got support over here so we're rising up from the support area strong move up met with supply so that's the dump before the pump right so we're looking to fill that candle over the course of this day so we are in fact bullish right which fits the weak dollar thesis um, so we can draw a 
Fibonacci on this. All right, so it's come up to 38.2. It's forced away from that aggressively. The neckline comes up to 109.50-ish. So we put that up there as a target. Get rid of the fibos now. Go back to the hourly chart. So that sort of helps us see through the uh, all the volatility. Um, having said that, given that it's broken structure, what it's going to need to do is break that resistance 10905. So we're going to have to get back above there to go up. Otherwise, it's going to meet resistance and blow off to the downside. So we need this to come up, break, retest to fulfill the bullish thesis. Okay. Any other pairs, guys, you want me to look at for you? Gold. Right, gold didn't complete what we were looking for yesterday, if you recall, but it's done that today. So as I said, Monday's usually setting us up and not to expect too much out of a Monday in terms of lengths of moves. Yeah, with the Euro, just to quote, um, where are we on that Euro first green day? Yeah, I, would, um, I wouldn't be wanting to buy it at the moment it could quite easily, as I said, move up. I mean, it can continue just lower for one, but it can move up because it's breaking out. You see, it's it's moved up high, and then engulfed all of the all of the day's um, move. Right, massive move to the downside. It's came out of uh, late London, um, or late London, sort of, yeah, late morning London. So that move is very strong. I wouldn't want to buy it just because it's low on the day. Um, I mean, the way to approach that for now, if you did want to buy it, I mean, you'd want to make sure that... Okay, first of all, This is the five minute chart, okay? So if you did want to buy it in anticipation of the correction, because you've got this dump, now you're expecting the pump up into the dump. So that's one way to look at it. Look, so that is a displacement. And if you want to buy scalp back up, you can, but I'd be wary in doing so, but just because of that momentum. But if we're seeing a setup, then you can. We've broken, arguably we have broken um, structure here. We've moved back into the order block. Is 
effectively all of this with the lower end if you go down to a one minute chart this here so we've tapped in which is great and therefore you can expect the continuation up we need to clear 108.90 that's current resistance we need to clear also 108.92 this is all on the one minute chart all right and in doing so you're probably standing in good stead for a, for a continuation Now, it's pretty choppy stuff. This is this is the thing with trading at this time of the day. But you do have the, the schematic playing out bullish. This is bullish structure. And if you wanted to just take a punt, essentially that's what it is. I mean, you've got a setup. But you've got the V bottom. Um, you've got the drive out of resistance. You've got the pullback that's come in to retest fill all this after the displacement we've got a subsequent move up um, you've got all of you've got all of the signals that you might want to start looking for a long and if you wanted to go for it you know, if you stop the low you have a three to one five clip stop loss um, you can drag that out to be more conservative for two for one buy it market and just see if this doesn't do what is expected and correct that displacement up into the neckline of that M formation so that's the that's the current trade that's on if you want to take that and then um, and then great but for me I would much rather wait nearer to the Wall Street Open so that I don't need to sit through all of the chop and the volatility and the spikes high and low that, that you know and if you're working on a tight stop five pips I mean that's five pips is nothing um, quite easily get stopped out this one here is eight pips but if you bring that in closer for a higher anyway so what I'd be looking for, as I said, is looking for the market to confirm that it's, that it's intending to move back up and catch something more explosive um, that can continue for the rest of the day. So an explosive start, taking money off, getting to break even, and then riding it for the rest of the day. And, and that, I think, you'd have more confidence once we get through those current resistances and then up through 109, up into that area, buying around round numbers, 109.00 if we could, a little bit below, touch above, somewhere in there to take it up for a 50 pip move, if not more, towards 110. Um, the... The average tree range on the day is okay. Uh, so it's increased up to about uh, 100 pips over 21 days. How many pips have we done so far today? We've done half of them. So 100 pips will take us up to the going long. Up into the 70s, 1970 ish, 80. But we need to get above 109, that neckline resistance. But yeah, so there's a scout opportunity for a scout. 
maybe that will be your trade. And then there'll be another opportunity above where the line to ride it all day higher. So that is the euro. Um, could you look? You stocks are not my thing. What do you need on the stock? I mean, we can apply the same technicals. UPST. it up now you what is it upstart holdings and that's that okay we've looked at this before it seems as though it did exactly what I thought it might it's just trundling on this very little nothing interesting really it's just moving sideways isn't it Yeah, just it's uh, at the top of the sideways channel it's been stuck in since the 10th of August. It's trying to move up from the lows. And if it breaks 35.70, then it could start to retrace a bit firmer and moving up into the displacement. There it is. I'll put it on a four hour chart just to make it a bit bigger. So, moving sideways, the high that it needs to get above on the four hour chart is 3545 ish or Looks pretty bullish. Looks like it's heading up towards those highs. And look at these stocks. So the one that stood out. It's already making its move, is it? Okay. Um, the one that stood out to me was this US 30. So it's been consolidated in this sideways box. And as I said a bit earlier, often you can find that that's like a coil of energy. When the market breaks either side, it can really take off. Now, considering the first peak formation, so this was attempting to break higher and failed. We broke lower, failed. And when that happens, not always, but the first move is usually the one that the market will go back to. So you get the fake out and then you get the stops taken out because it's come up from low. So you've got the long squeeze taking out the stops. And once it's taken out the stops, it tends to then make the move. So I'm just wondering if we're going to get a bullish parabolic breakout of this channel in the US 30. It was the underperformer yesterday, so it's probably got some catching up to do, and then breaking out of this trend line. Breaking out to the top side. And then this scale that I've drawn is like in a is a so if you go either way, right? So let's just concentrate on the upside. Uh, that's the bias to, to pull back into the short shorts that have been built up since all the way back in August. So if we get that squeeze on, 
what I've done is I've just basically measured the top to bottom of the current box, if you like, this rectangle. This box that we're in. And that we're inside of at the moment, but we could break to the top side of it. So that's what I've measured. And I've basically just done a 100% expansion because that's often what you can get. You can get 100% expansions or 50% expansions of the box. So 50%, 100, 150, 200. So a 200% expansion of that box in a breakout would take us up into last week's highs. And that would squeeze all of these shorts. Now, I'm not for one minute suggesting that's going to happen all in one day. But that could be, today could be the start of it. Right, so, and we might want to target these levels on the way up. So you've got 50% ex expansion ties up with Thursday's highs. And then you've got the 100 expansion that ties up with Wednesday's highs. See how that works? So those could be your targets on the upside for the Dow. And then again, we're looking to see how this sets up for the Wall Street Open. At the moment, we're pumping up. I'd like to see is a pullback into the Wall Street open and then to catch that low to ride up. That would be a textbook scenario. Right, so this is the current bullish trend line for the day. We're testing resistance of that trend line. So make that red. So that's what we're looking for, guys. And then the breakout area is going to be the top of the box. So keep an eye on that. Um, so that's high up on the list. NASDAQ. Where's the NASDAQ? And also it's a day two continuation, so it would make sense. So we had the fail breakout yesterday down low to day one day two to go up in fact bear with me we'll have day one one day three they start to get the brains ticking over day one day two day three turn to day one No, this is a new day one down here. So day one, day two continuation. Day two is a general continuation trade. Okay, so I want to look at NAS. Where is NAS? Down here as a day three. So day three. So day three is generally a corrective day, but let's see what we're doing. I'll take off all of these workings from yesterday. And we'll go out to the daily chart. Right, so we are on the front side of the downtrend. Still. We're coming up relatively strong. One, two, three days of rise into resistance, potentially. Or we're we just going to continue on up. On a weekly chart, what does this look like? Well, I've got the M formation on the weekly chart. We've come up into this area of potential resistance again. We're at a 38.2. So I'm wondering if we're going to struggle to really take off. Today on the upside, it is in an area of potential resistance. Point 
maybe we're going to move into the 50% mean reversion area of the weekly and on the daily daily we've come up already come up into the 61.8 and we're embarking on the 78.6 so I think there is a bit of room up into this area 78.6 is here just about those highs Fifty percent mean reversion of the weekly range is up there. So we'll get rid of these markings now, and then we'll come down into our lower time frame. So that's our upside target area established due to the daily and weekly charts. Note that this is a high volume area with all of that consolidation, so it's considered as a resistance and then coming down to the near term charts so bullish trend so what we're looking for is a correction Correction and then correction into the New York Wall Street open and then an aggressive move up into our target area on the day. Okay, so did we look at gold? I can't remember, sorry. Right, gold. Um, so we've hit our 50% target. Right, so we looked at this yesterday. These are our target areas on the way up. The Fibonacci lines up nicely with stop loss areas on the charts. Highs and lows etc so I'm sticking with that um, thesis that we're moving up um, again we need to see a correction lower in the yields then you're starting to see see that and the dollar we're meeting resistance as we talked about earlier. We've been going for an hour now, so we're on a, so that's looking good so far. So that would represent a bullish bias for gold. Gold is the front side of this. But on the daily chart, just as a reminder, we're looking to correct into this bearish impulse so we're coming up we've done a fair bit of the correction already but i think there's more to come if yield and the dollar continue to tail off we've got depending on where we measure the thing from so we've actually done the 50 percent already let me just check back on what we're looking at like from there yeah so we've done the 50%. So next on the agenda is 1907, 1913 on the upside. It's not to say that we can't see any downside, but that is just my thesis. Right? You trade what you see, not what, not what you believe. But at the moment, we're seeing a bullish impulse. Stops above the prior highs 
78.6 for the upside. And a potential for a weaker dollar. All right, guys, so I think those those are the favorite pairs there. I think we've got someone asking for dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. We'll look at that as well for you. Dollar Swiss is a grinding correction of that impulse. Nice steady correction. Um, these can be met with sort of machine gun fire continuations, taking out the stops below in a rapid movement, but. Um, Could be more upside to come. Maybe not much. We've got these lows under here. Up there. Draw that in. So we've already hit that resistance and we've re reacted to it. So is that the makings for a downside continuation? Or are we just going to pause and continue on up? Well, we can start looking to the lower time frames to look at the structure. And for me, so long as we stay above 87.60, we're remaining bullish, continuation up. We break that level, then we're going to start homing in on what prospects there are for a long squeeze. It's all very choppy, wicky stuff. Not really, not really uh, the best environment for looking for setups because there's just levels everywhere. Traps so far between there and there. So maybe we'll just see some sideways action. So not, not really on my list of pairs to be watching, to be honest. Looking for the easier stuff, easy to identify trade opportunities that stand out. Okay, right, so we'll call it a day there, guys. I think we've covered the uh, the majors. Um, what have we got now? We've got... Not long until the uh, Wall Street open. Right, so I'll see you in the chat room, the analysis room and i wish you all a good day ahead thank you for joining and we'll see what comes off so keep an eye on this dollar there you go it's perking up again keep an eye on this dollar and yields um, and if we start to see downside momentum in those then we're going to stand pretty good with our setups and that's not to say if our, you know, our preferred theses don't come to fruition, there won't be opportunities. Like with gold yesterday, I shorted it, even though we were talking in the morning about prospects for a long, which didn't come until today, I shorted that move because it's been set up. We've got the pump just ahead of the Wall Street open. So when it broke down structure over here on the lower time frames. So it broke down this structure. I think it was that, probably that low there before the high. That was my cue to start looking for the short. Right? Even though my overall thesis is bullish, which is, has been correct, as proven by the move to the upside that we've seen, there are still opportunities to go against your thesis if they present themselves. You know, and they can be over. 
you know, that was done in what 30 odd minutes of the Wall Street Open. And, you know, and then I was back to my bullish thesis because now we've had the drop. Now I'm looking for the continuation to the upside. So just because we're set up to go one way doesn't mean that you can't take trades in the opposite direction, especially on the Wall Street Open. Now, you see with that euro dollar, that was the risk. As I said, very choppy conditions in this first couple of hours of the New York Open. And they can, you know, take you out. So I prefer to see these things set up properly. The closer to nine o'clock, the more likelihood. If that was, trust me, if that was nearer to 9.30, that would have taken off to the upside. Right, so that's what we're looking for. Stuff that lines up with your thesis around the 9.30 open, fantastic. Um, but if you see stuff that's setting up in the opposite direction, but it is a setup, and it's in, so we're looking for dumps into pumps and pumps into dumps just ahead of the Wall Street open. Thanks, guys. See you soon.